All right, let's review complex numbers and Euler's formula. So recall that z, a complex number, is typically written as x plus i y, where x is what we call the real component, y is the imaginary component, and i is the square root of minus one. And so together, i y forms an imaginary number. Now while this is probably the most common way to write complex numbers, my undergraduate degree was electrical engineering. And in electrical engineering, they use J instead of I. So at this point, it's just burned into my brain. So going forward, in most cases, I'll actually write Z is equal to X plus JY. And I think it also has the additional benefits. I think it's a little bit easier when I'm writing things by hand of not looking like the number one, whereas this may look like it. So uh, you'll just have to get used to that. Now, because X and Y form an ordered pair, we can plot them. And so here we have the complex plane. The x-axis is the real component of z, so z here is equal to x plus jy. The y-axis is the imaginary component of z. And so if we take our coordinates, x and y, they form a vector in the complex plane. And the length of that vector is r, and it's at an angle of theta degrees. Now when we write our complex number like this, x plus jy, that's in what we call Cartesian form, or Cartesian coordinates, or rectangular coordinates. All those are used. But we also can write it in what's called polar form, or polar coordinates, where we have r times e to the j theta power. Now I'm sure you've seen polar coordinates before, but you probably saw those as an ordered pair as well, where it was a uh, r comma theta was how you write it, just like we write here x comma y. That's not wrong, but knowing that we also can represent it as a uh, what we call a complex exponential will be useful going forward. So recall that e is Euler's number, which has an approximate value of 2.71828 because it really has an infinite number of digits here, right? And since we're raising e to the j theta power, where j is the imaginary number, square root minus one, this is what we call a complex exponential. Now before we see more about what this really means, let's recall how to uh, convert between polar or Cartesian coordinates. And in all these examples, theta will be in radians. So if I have polar coordinates, which means r and theta, to get the xy values, then we just use trigonometry because R here is the hypotenuse of a right triangle, right? With this side here having value X, this side here, which I've drawn here, has value Y. So using the trigonometry, you just get these values. And if I happen to have X and Y, because it's in Cartesian coordinates, I can represent it in polar coordinates by calculating the length of the hypotenuse this way and calculating theta as the arc tangent of the ratio of y over x. Now when you do this right here, you're probably gonna plug it in your calculator and just write down the number it gave you, but you need to be careful that you know what quadrant the vector's in. So let's see why I'm talking about that now. So let's say I had this vector here, and this is two, and this is two. So you say theta is equal to the arc tangent of two over two, and so this is right here reduces to one, which would be some value in radians, ultimately. But what we're gonna get here is that theta is equal to 45 degrees, which I can see from the picture. But what if I'd had this, where this is minus two, and this is minus two, and when I say what's theta, meaning coming around from here down to here, well, now I'm going to say theta is equal to the arc tangent of minus 2 over minus 2. Well, this also reduces to 1. So your calculator is going to say that's 45 degrees. But that's not 45 degrees. It is 45 degrees below the x-axis. But I'm talking about the entire thing where it's really 45 degrees plus the 180 degrees it took to move around the circle. Okay. So by drawing the picture, I can know, am I talking about this situation or this situation? And we're not limited to things that would be 45 degrees. For anything that's in this quadrant, there's gonna be something similar over the third quadrant. And likewise, 
if I have something in the second quadrant, there's also to be some corresponding vector in the fourth quadrant that reduces to the same ratio. So whether you're talking about this or this, you need to pay attention to where you're at. Right? So now let's look at Euler's formula. So here we have that our complex exponential e to the j theta is equal to cosine of theta plus j sine of theta. All right? Now note that cosine is what we call an even function and sine is an odd function, which ultimately means that cosine of minus theta is equal to cosine of theta and sine of minus theta is equal to minus sine of theta. Let's see another example to see what I'm saying here. So one of the most common examples for an even function would be f of x is equal to x squared. So when I plot that, I get something that looks like this, and that says that f of 2 is equal to 2 squared is equal to 4, and f of minus 2 is equal to minus 2 squared, which is still equal to 4. They have the same y value, right? And so cosine, which looks like this, If I were to come over to here to say pi over four radians, or here to minus pi over four radians, I still get the same height. So that's why we said cosine of theta is equal to cosine of minus theta. Cosine of pi over four is equal to cosine of minus pi over four. And then a, a, a common example for an odd function would be f of x is equal to x cubed which looks like this. So two cubed is equal to eight, and minus two cubed is equal to minus eight, which is equal to minus two cubed. So sine has that symmetrical property as well. If I come to this point, or this point, which is the same distance from the origin, I just change the sign. So why does that matter? Well, if we take this function right here, or this relationship, excuse me, and note these two facts, now if I say, well, what's e to the minus j theta power? It simplifies down to cosine of theta minus j sine of theta. So using those two formulas, this one right here and this one right here, we can add those to have e to the j theta plus e to the minus j theta is equal to this, because this right here is e j theta, e to the minus j theta. Adding those, we get cosine of theta plus cosine of theta is two cosine of theta. And j sine of theta minus j sine of theta cancels these two out. So I just add zero, so it simplifies to this. And then rearranging in terms of cosine of theta, we can see that cosine of theta is equal to the sum of two complex exponentials. What's really interesting about that is that e to the j theta is a complex number, and e to the minus j theta is also a complex number. But these parts cancel out because they're complex conjugate pairs. Okay, So I get this right here. And this is going to be important going forward for some of the things we'll look at. Well, if we take the difference between the two, well, now we get that cosine of theta minus cosine of theta cancels those two out, so I just get zero. And then j sine theta minus a minus j sine theta is 2j sine theta. And once again, rearranging, we see that sine of theta is equal to this complex number. This still is a complex number. All right? We won't see this as much. Cosine is more uh, useful because we'll be dealing with real signals for the most part. Putting all that together, that leads to the unit circle where the radius is 1 because it's the unit circle. And so looking at this, we can see some common angles, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees, so forth, written also in terms of radians, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3. And remembering this right here, that our R is the hypotenuse of a right triangle, well then we can see that if I take something like E to the j pi over 6 radians power, right? 
because R here is 1. This is in polar coordinates. I can easily convert it to Cartesian coordinates by basically using the trigonometry. That is the cosine value because cosine of theta here is going to be my x value. In this case, it's square root 3 over 2. And y is sine of theta. So this says that for this angle, uh, 30 degrees, it has a sine of 1 half. So I can combine those to get something like this and do this for lots of others. There's some special cases. Notice that when I come up to this point, 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians, there's no real component. Down here, there's no real component. Over here, there's no imaginary component. And over here, there's no imaginary component. So that leads me to this. This right here simplifies down to just J when we're talking about e to the J 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians. As I continue around to here, it simplifies to minus 1. Continue down to here, it simplifies to minus j. And continuing back to 2 pi radians or 0 radians, I just get 1. Because e to the 0 power is just like any other number raised to the 0 power. It just has a value of 1. So in another video, I'll talk about complex arithmetic.